Hi, Canal. Thank you very much for joining us today. How are things in Toronto? Great. Thanks for, for having me here, James. Excited to chat about light metal and, and continue our conversation. Lime Metal is not a miner or a producer of battery metals, but rather a developer of battery components of the next generation of batteries. And, and I want to start right there. Maybe you can just explain to us what the next generation of EV batteries are and how are they or how will they be different from current EV batteries? Yeah, no problem. Uh, so next generation batteries can come in a number of flavors. So I think until now, a lot of the work has been done in looking at cathode materials, so the nickel cobalt lithium or iron phosphate, there used to be manganese based cathodes, how do we change that for performance and, and also for cost. But what we're starting to see is now for next generation batteries as you work towards things like solid state, um, more innovation on the anode side. So there's groups looking at silicon anodes, uh, lithium metal anodes, which we're doing with liquid electrolytes or with solid electrolytes. And so the, the next generation of anodes really facilitate uh, new types of batteries that can either be safer, cheaper, uh, higher performing, or use new materials. So there's even pathways to using lithium with sulfur that can also vastly reduce the cost of batteries. So currently the anode is made of graphite, but a lithium metal battery, the anode is made of lithium, which will make the battery much more powerful, but also cheaper. So the, if I understand you correctly, the two primary benefits of using lithium metal are in the anode are performance, and because of the higher performance, it will also reduce the cost of the battery. Is that correct? Correct. So with the lithium metal anode, you're able to eliminate the graphite um and also improve the energy density since you already have lithium present on the anode side and so by producing higher energy density now you can either for the same say range of the vehicle reduce your dependence or reduce your material intensity of nickel and cobalt so that's where potential cost savings come into play over over time but also as i mentioned in the first comment lithium metal anodes also facilitate new technologies like a lithium sulfur where you're actually getting rid of the nickel and cobalt as well. Um, so it unlocks a lot of different opportunities and options for the future. And who will be the ultimate end user of this product or who would be the buyer of this product? Yeah, so our anode technology would be sold into anybody making batteries, whether that's a battery company or as we see, you know, automotive OEMs, for example, taking more active role in their battery production. Um, and, and so they would be also potential customers or users of either the technology or the end product that we produce. And what other companies are involved in the development of next generation batteries? Uh, so there, there are a number of companies predominantly actually in North America. We see, uh, I guess, twofold. One is more startups. Um, that have emerged and been working on this for a few years and of course larger companies uh, investing their capital in this. So you know to give you some names I mean one which we had publicly announced we work with is Blue Solutions which is actually the first um, commercial producer of solid state batteries pr primarily used in bus applications uh, but then there's a number of companies like Qberg which is actually owned by Northvolt, Factorial Energy, um SES so uh, there's a group as I said brought primarily here in North America uh, I would imagine also the traditional groups are also looking at new technologies we've seen CATL announce a sodium ion battery for example um, so it's a pretty broad spectrum of, of groups working on this topic and you mentioned earlier that lime metals focus will be on the anode replacing the graphite with lithium metal are there other companies trying to do the same thing or a similar thing yes yeah, so a number of the groups that, uh, i mentioned want to use lithium metal anodes in their batteries and everyone has a different strategy in terms of uh, how deep they integrate into that their, their partner blue solutions already makes some sort of lithium metal anode but there's technology, technological challenges we're trying to overcome to produce thinner anodes, essentially, uh, 
with them and with our other customers. Uh, you have groups like SCS that are producing their own anode with their own technology, but there's a number of groups that have focused on cell design and how to make the end cell, and we're looking for partners to produce anode like ourselves. So I, I want to get a little bit deeper into this discussion now because you've already mentioned lithium metal quite a few times, and that's what you're going to replace the graphite with. But how is lithium metal different from lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide? And those are the, uh, I guess, the terms we hear on a regular basis. So the lithium carbonate and the lithium hydroxide are, are chemicals, you know, carbonate, for example, powder form that goes into the cathode side of the battery. Um, lithium metal is actually, uh, if you imagine, just you know, a big block of shiny shiny metal so it's in its metallic form rather than a more chemical form um, and actually lithium metal is we're producing it or our technology can produce it from lithium carbonate so the, the traditional actual process in the industry is take lithium carbonate produce something called lithium chloride and then convert it to metal that process results in a fair amount of uh, chlorine gas as a byproduct so our innovation in producing the metal, which is one part of our business, is to convert lithium carbonate to metal. So it's a it's a value add step uh, to the lithium carbonate. And I just want to follow up on that because lime metal will be a vertically integrated strategy. You're going to be producing the lithium metal and then using that metal to create lithium metal anoids. Is this correct? Correct. So lithium metal right now uh, is used in pharma, different alloys for, say, aircraft and primary batteries or little coin cells, the round ones you put in some devices or medical devices. So there's been a pretty small market. There's about 6,000 tons of metal required globally, 90% plus produced in China. Here in North America, there's a small production of metal uh, by Livent. They have a capacity of about 200 tons. Uh, so if you really want to scale next generation batteries with these new types of anodes, a significant increase in metal production is required. And as I described, the metal production under the traditional sense would also require scale up of lithium chloride. So by using lithium carbonate, a more uh, commonly produced metal uh, product, um, we have an advantage in being able to more easily scale up metal production and, and also to secure supply for our anode business, it's good to uh, produce our own metals. So there's a great opportunity. I mean, Benchmark Mineral Intelligence predicts we need 20,000 tons by 30, uh, 2030 of uh, battery grade metal. So there's a big gap to fill there in, in terms of metal production. So Lime Metal also has a pilot project uh, north of Toronto. And maybe you can just touch on this pilot project and what is exactly happening there. Yeah, so at our headquarters in Markham, uh, just north of Toronto, we're actually piloting that technology I described to convert lithium carbonate to lithium metal. Uh, we're running a series of campaigns to to prove out the technology. Uh, the good thing, I guess, to state is that that technology or the unit size we're using is is the same uh, that we would use in a commercial plant. We would just use a number of them in parallel to to build a build a larger plant. So that's a core piece uh, of the, the business uh, and we continue to advance that to ensure that we can uh, demonstrate and provide you know, sample material to customers so they can qualify that material uh, and, and confirm uh, you know, its, its specifications. And, and so that's what we're doing at the headquarter in Markham. And you're currently working with the engineering firm Hatch to determine the feasibility or the economics behind developing a larger plant, a, a more um, commercial plant. Maybe you can just tell us about that process and when can we expect the results from this engineering study? Yeah, so the technical team is working back and forth with the, the engineering firm to just determine you know, what are the risks and costs of bringing that into to, uh, a larger production? Uh, I, I guess the good thing about the metal business is that it's a little bit independent of the anode business in the sense that 
as a, we could scale that up uh, sooner and still enter into other markets besides batteries to sell metal, given there's a gap. Uh, and so we're parallel processing or piloting inner engineering so that we can be uh, ready and uh, have a set pathway in, in the course of 23 to when we can take this commercial. I want to move on now and discuss your partner, Blue Solutions. You touched on this earlier, but you've entered into a, an agreement with Blue Solutions. Maybe we can just start by who Blue Solutions is. It's a company I'm not familiar with. Yeah, Blue Solutions, their facility in Quebec. It's also owned by a French conglomerate uh, called Bulleray. And uh, I think they, they've produced the first commercial solid state battery. Um, and and they do have some, you know, it works, it, it works in buses. Uh, however, it has some design challenges, I think, for, for mass scale. So that's why uh, we're working with them to produce their next generation anode uh, technology that will help them, you know, scale up into other types of vehicles like passenger vehicles. And really, it's, it's our anode technology that helps them unlock that because it enables very thin anodes. The traditional way to make a lithium anode is roll it and uh, or extrude the lithium, uh, but you have a limitation to how thin you can uh, take that because it becomes very fragile. Uh, imagine, you know, aluminum foil and you could just sort of rip it apart very easily, which is not great for a battery. Uh, so our anode technology, which is used as a technique called vapor deposition, uh, allows you to basically spray paint, that, in a sense, lithium onto, say, a copper backing and produce a very thin layer of lithium, which is, is beneficial to produce their next generation of batteries. And do you have an exclusive agreement with Blue Solutions? Are you in discussions with other OEMs or battery makers? Yeah, we're we're casting a wide net as there's a number of companies interested in our ANO technology and our metal. So we have samples out to 12 or more companies. We're talking to 20 plus and continuing to to widen the reach here in North America and in, in Europe to a certain extent. Um, so there's no exclusivity. There's, there's a wide, uh, I guess, demand for uh, these types of anodes. So we can expect more announcements on partnerships in the future. Yeah, we're we'll keep part of our objectives is to continue to expand commercial relations, and uh, and then of course, if if we are successful, we would hope to bring that to the public eye and and our investor or shareholder base. In a trend we're seeing with a lot of lithium producers or even lithium companies that are in the development stage is that they're entering into offtake agreements with OEMs and typically in return for um, not only the, the lithium but also an equity position in the company. Is this an option available for Lion Metal? Yeah, we're, we're open to different ways to continue to capitalize the company as we, we scale up particularly the metal plant. I think different from where hydroxide and carbonate are where people are trying to lock in supply for existing technology the lithium-ion technology uh i would say companies a little bit further away from locking in their metal supply for the future but uh you know down the road that could definitely be be an option and independent also of the next generation batteries we see there's opportunity to uh you know lock up some of the the offtake of a potential commercial plant given that most people are importing their lithium metal right now. Canal, I want to move on now and discuss your balance sheet and your financial needs that will be associated with moving the pilot plant into commercial production. How much cash do you currently have? Yeah, in the last reported we were at about 20 million uh, Canadian. Uh, that's good for keeping our R&D programs and development programs going and expanding the team. Um, however, if you want to go build hard assets and, and commercial facilities, uh, you're going to need additional capital. And, and so uh, something to think about as we move to, to, through 2023 and how to capitalize the business uh, for further development. Canel, as we wrap up, can you summarize what investors can expect in terms of news flow from Lime Metals in 2023? Yeah, no problem, James. Uh, I think uh, 
You know, probably three key things. One is continue our metal development and engineering study to be commercial ready on the metal side. Two is continue to develop our anode products and, and qualify them with a variety of customers and also get that feedback on how to continuously improve the products. And three is then linked to that is, is uh, really continued commercial traction and uh, establishing more partnerships like we have with Blue Solutions that we can tell our investors and potential investors of, of the progress we're making. Canel, that was a great overview of Lime Metal and how lithium metal can improve the performance of EV batteries. And I want to thank you for sharing your insights with us today. Great. Thanks, James. Thanks for having me.